The Untold Story of Carbon Trading Carbon trading is a market-based system targeted at reducing greenhouse gases which contribute to global warming, mainly carbon dioxide emitted by burning fossil fuels. But how does it work? Let's find out. What is carbon trade? The buying and selling of credits which allow a business or any other entity to emit a specific amount of carbon dioxide or any other greenhouse gases is known as carbon trading. The carbon credits and the carbon trade are authorized by governments to gradually reduce overall carbon emissions and mitigate their contribution to climate change. Carbon trading is also said to act as a carbon emissions trading. What is the carbon market? Even though it's been described as a market, there are in fact multiple markets for carbon trading. Carbon credits bought and sold in one market might not be valid in another. The compliance market for carbon credits that occurs inside a regulated program, such as the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative in the Northeastern US, California's Greenhouse Gas Program, or the European Union Emissions Trading Scheme, is referred to as a whole as carbon trading. Businesses operating in certain industries, such as fossil fuel-fired power plants or whose emissions surpass a certain level, must comply with these mandated programs by obtaining an allowance or credit for each ton of carbon dioxide equivalent they release annually. A free initial allocation of carbon credits is available to participants, or they can bid on them in an auction to purchase them. Businesses can commoditize carbon by selling extra carbon credits to other parties whose emissions have grown as they cut their own emissions. Regulated carbon markets generally trade only in their own carbon allowances, even though using carbon offsets in place of a proportion of the credits is permitted in some schemes if they comply with strict regulatory rules. Where does voluntary carbon offsetting fit in? The other type of carbon market relies on creating carbon offsets, which any business organization or individual can buy to offset their greenhouse gas emissions voluntarily. The buyers in the voluntary carbon market are often organizations that have already implemented carbon reduction plans to minimize emissions from their business activities as far as possible. To achieve zero emissions, carbon neutrality, or other corporate social responsibility targets, they buy carbon offsets from a scheme that has reduced or avoided emissions elsewhere. The sellers in the voluntary carbon market are project developers who design and implement real-world carbon reduction projects by the requirements of one of the voluntary standard bodies. Each ton of CO2 emissions avoided can be sold as a carbon offset, compensating for a ton of CO2 emitted elsewhere. Because the voluntary market is global and fragmented, many project developers sell offsets through a retailer or broker who takes responsibility for promoting the offset and finding buyers. What are the advantages? In the past, cap and trade programs have been quite successful in addressing environmental issues. For example, Trading sulfur dioxide permits helped to reduce acid rain in the US. The main draw for governments trying to reduce CO2 is how much simpler carbon trading is to execute than pricey direct laws and unpopular carbon taxes. With a strong carbon price and an around the world integration of regional cap and trade programs could make global decarbonization relatively quick and painless. And the disadvantages? Creating a market in something with no such intrinsic value, like carbon dioxide, is very difficult. You need to promote scarcity and strictly limit the right to emit so that it can be traded. Political interference in the world's biggest carbon trading scheme, the EU ETS, has created gluts of permits. These were usually given out for free, which sometimes caused the price to drop and caused ineffective emission reductions. Another issue is the tradability of offset permits, which are obtained by funding pollution reductions in developing nations. It's debatable how important these permits are for lowering carbon emissions and thus raises concerns about how effective the cap and trade system as a whole is. 
Now, let's talk about the carbon trading agreement post Glasgow COP26. At the COP26 climate change conference in Glasgow in November 2021, regulations for a worldwide carbon market were finally adopted after much deliberation, putting into practice the globally coordinated strategy first outlined at the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. Article 6 of the framework will include a centralized and distinct bilateral mechanism. The bilateral system is intended for countries to exchange carbon offset credits, assisting them in meeting their emission targets, while the centralized system is for the public and private sectors. According to the new accord, those that produce carbon credits will contribute 5% of their earnings to a fund that will aid underdeveloped nations in combating climate change. So to guarantee a decrease in emissions overall, 2% of credits will also be canceled. There are concerns that the new rules, which permit players to use prior credits produced between 2013 and 2020, would potentially flood the market and drive down costs. The framework, according to its proponents, provides financial incentives for nations and businesses to develop emission-reducing technologies and programs such as mechanical carbon capture systems and forest planting, all of which will lower atmospheric carbon levels. There are more and more businesses that are committing to combating climate change by drastically cutting their greenhouse gas emissions, but many companies discover that they're unable to completely remove their emissions or even to reduce them as quickly as they would want. Also, the task is particularly difficult for businesses that want to attain net zero emissions, which entails taking as many greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere as they emit. Many people will need to use carbon credits to make up the emissions they can't get rid of any other way. The Institute of International Finance sponsored Task Force on Scaling Voluntary Carbon Markets with knowledge supported from McKinsey, predicts that by 2030, demand for carbon credits might expand by a factor of 15 or more, and by a factor of up to 100 by 2050. In total, the carbon credit market may be valued more than $50 billion in 2030. Are there any alternatives? There are two basic options, carbon taxes and direct regulations. Many European nations have enacted taxes on energy production or content. Taxes have been enacted or revoked in Australia, India, Japan, and South Korea. Other governments have tried to reduce emissions through regulation, like in the US, where President Obama had mandated a clean power plan on energy producers with the goal of reducing emissions from this industry by 32% by 2030. This strategy is currently being tested. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.